Okay, so we're just going to look at Thomas Malthus. So remember, we need to know his view, which is pessimistic, and we need to know an anti-Malthusian view, which we will look at Esther Forzer up. So she is an optimistic person and has a different view. All right, so just going back to who he is. So he was an 18th century British philosopher and economist. So the period of time in which he lived also really influenced his view as well. He didn't really have access to technology uh, in terms of what we do today. So what we say, a pessimistic or negative view, right? So it's really important that we remember two things when we talk about him or introduce him, his relationship between the population and food production slash resources, right? So we say that basically population is growing much quicker at a geometric or exponential rate as opposed to food production, which is growing in an arithmetic rate. So eventually you can see that their geometric rate will outstrip basically food production. So he says a couple of things, that the land is fixed, right? And we know today that that's not the case. We've seen a lot of creative and innovative things to produce additional areas in where we can produce food. Talked about soil erosion and declining yields as a result. Okay, so this is pretty much his graph, which is really important here. So what we're seeing here is food production growing in a very static, steady and arithmetic manner and our population growing and crossing over here in a geometric or exponential manner. Now basically from here onwards we start to see a little bit of doom and gloom, right? That might be a war, if there's a shortage of food, that could be diseases, that could be famine as a result there, all right? Now we haven't seen that worldwide famine that he potentially predicted, but we have seen very localised famines as a result, okay? So basically we're interested in this line here called the carrying capacity, so that's the resources that we can have, right, or have available to us. Once we exceed that, then basically we're going to find that people potentially die off, all right? So that's what we don't want, and this is what he has basically said under his theory would occur. Okay, so again, as I said, there would be according to his view, a catastrophe. We have seen this in the past. We've seen this in China after the Great Leap Forward, right, when we had population growing too quickly. We did see a famine after that, right, we've seen plenty of localised famines. Okay, so one thing that he's talking about, if you look here, it's very, very negative. He's saying we should live in crowded conditions. Diseases are great. This means we can have things like the plague and it will increase our death rate. All right, so he's saying we have preventative measures. So we can prevent this by getting married later, abstaining, family planning, self-restraint. All of that would lower the birth rate. So he's saying that these are positives here. He's also saying we have positive or natural checks. So anything that is negative that happens naturally, like a flood, a natural disaster, etc. But he also likes wars and famines because they keep things in check. All right. So that would increase the death rate in some areas as a result of these events and he likes that because it's not putting pressure on resources. Not everything was all doom and gloom though, as what he had theorised back then in the 18th century. We don't see exponential population growth anymore in terms of his prediction, right? In fact, it's been the opposite since we've talked about women having careers, women have got married later, they're having fewer children, and generally globally fertility rates have begun to fall quite drastically. And quite often we can look around and argue that now most countries are having in high income countries pro-nationalist policies as a result so i can argue this here as i said there are and have been sadly a lot of famines like the one in yemen that's still going on right we've also got man-made famines we could argue we've got things like hyperinflation we've had the issue in zimbabwe with that as well we've been able to reclaim land we've been able to drain wetlands we've had vertical farming then we've had the Green Revolution. We have we have increased our productivity, but not necessarily needed any more land. So that's involved with fertilizers, mechanization, irrigation as well, right? Then we've had our positive anti-Malthusian Esther Borzer up. And her idea basically is that when we need something, when there is demand, we will create, we will innovate, we will provide these technological improvements here. This is her graph, and you can see that food supply well, growth is always above the population growth here. So she has a very optimistic view, unlike Thomas Malthus. Okay, so you might need to be able to either explain his view, argue whether it's relevant today. All right, good luck.